expression of traits how do particular traits or characteristics get expressed a gene is the physical and functional unit of heredity genes are made up of dna and act as instructions to make protein molecules of the cell these proteins implement all the functions of a living organism and determine the organism's characteristics when the cell reproduces it passes all of these informations on to the daughter cells and thus traits are passed on to offsprings this happens through dna copying mendelian experiments show that each of the parent plant contributes equally to the dna of the offspring both the parents contribute a copy of same gene thus each pea plant has two sets of all genes thus each gamete has only one gene set each gene set is present as individual pieces called chromosome one each from the male and female parents each gamete takes one chromosome from each pair and when two such gametes combine they form the normal number of chromosomes this is the mechanism of inheritance and it also explains the results of mendel's experiments determination of sex determination of sex is a system that determines whether an offspring will be a male or a female factors for sex determination the organisms that reproduce sexually have two sexes in most of these organisms determination of sex is genetically controlled in some organisms sex is determined by environmental factors like temperature for example in alligators the temperature at which the fertilized eggs are kept decides the sex of the offspring how is sex determined in human beings in humans the sex of an individual is determined by the genes inherited from its parents human cells contain two sets of chromosomes one set is inherited from the mother and one from the father every human cell has 46 chromosomes that is 23 pairs of chromosomes there are 22 pairs of autosomes and one pair of sex chromosomes the egg from the mother contains half of 46 that is 23 chromosomes and the sperm from the father carries the other half that is 23 or 46 chromosomes together the baby has all 46 chromosomes females have two similar longer x chromosome while men have one longer x and one shorter y chromosome All offspring inherit capital X chromosome from their mother. Hence, the chromosome that the offspring receives from the father determines its sex. If it receives capital X chromosome, then it will be a daughter, and if capital Y, then it will be a son. evolution evolution is the change in the inherited characteristics of organisms over 
successive generations. Evolutionary processes give rise to diversity. As organisms grow and develop, they face a succession of environmental challenges. To overcome these environmental challenges, they are equipped with traits or characteristics. Thus, a certain amount of variation of traits exists among the different individuals belonging to a population. Some of these traits allow the individual that possesses them to survive in their environment better than other individuals who do not possess them and pass on the traits to their offspring. Over time, the adaptive trait spreads through the population. Therefore, the population evolves by means of natural selection. For example, a bacterial species which can withstand excessive heat will survive in a heat wave. Theory of Evolution of Life According to the theory of evolution of life, life evolved through a prolonged period of nearly 300 crores of years. Life began on earth in sea water with the appearance of a life substance that developed into a unicellular form of life in due course. Gradually, it underwent some orderly changes to develop increasingly complex multicellular forms. Slow sequential changes and development of living things gave way to the existence of many different kinds of plants and animals. This process is also referred to as organic evolution. Evidence for organic evolution Many theories of evolution of life have been proposed but the theory of organic evolution is the most widely accepted. Various types of evidences are available to support the theory. Morphological Evidence The study of morphology of plants and animals suggests that although the plants and animals possess a common set of characteristics, each group of plants and animals has its own pattern of organization. The bodies of horses, donkeys and zebras have similar structure as they descended from a common ancestor. Anatomical Evidence Although the human arm, a bull's leg, a bat's wing and whale's fin perform different functions, there are similarities in the bones and joints present in these organs. These are homologous organs. This similar skeletal composition indicates a common ancestor. Vestigial structures Some organs are rudimentary and non-functional in one group of animals while the same organs are well developed and functional in another group of animals. These non-functional organs are called as vestigial organs. Examples of vestigial structures Man has a rudimentary tailbone composed of four fused vertebrae in the same position as a monkey has a tail. Some rudimentary muscles like the ones a monkey uses to swing its tail are present in man too. Presence of vestigial organ is a vital evidence of organic evolution. 
From the evolutionary point of view, vestigial organs are structures that were well developed, functional and necessary in ancestors but are now in the process of disappearance. Paleontological Evidence Paleontology deals with the study of fossils. Fossils are any form of preserved remains or traces of living organisms. The process of formation of fossil is known as fossilization. Fossilization takes place over a long period of time. The particles settle in layers called stratum. The lowest layer which was deposited first contains the fossils of invertebrates. The top layers above them contained the fossils of prehistoric fish-like animals, amphibians, birds and mammals respectively in that order. Thus, fossil records suggest the order in which the modern day plants and animals have evolved from much simpler forms of past. Embryological Evidence Embryology is the science that deals with the study of the development of embryo. A comparative study of embryology of different groups of animals reveals a common pattern of development. Different vertebrates like fish, lizard, chick, rabbit, human being, etc. show similarity in early stages of embryo development but differ in the later stage of development. This suggests that during the embryological development of an individual, the characters of the ancestors are repeated. Lamarckism Lamarck incorporated the action of soft inheritance into his evolutionary theories. According to Lamarck, if a species lacks a certain trait that will allow it to survive, either it dies or it develops the missing trait. This developed trait is passed on to its offspring. According to him, the neck of giraffe became long as a result of continuous stretching in order to reach the leaves high up on trees. The offspring of these giraffes inherited the trait of long necks. Darwin's Theory of Natural Selection Charles Darwin was the first to propose the theory of evolution by means of natural selection in his book On the Origin of Species, 1859, where he rejected Lamarck's theory. According to him, the individuals who best adapt to the environment are the ones who survive. Individuals that survive, reproduce and pass on their traits onto their offspring. This process continues generation after generation and the traits that are fitted for survival are preserved. The population changes and a new species evolves when a population different enough from the original population results. This process by which nature selects individuals that have traits best adapted for survival is called as natural selection. Evidence for Natural Selection The light-colored form of peppered moths were more predominant than the black ones in England before the beginning of the Industrial Revolution as they were well camouflaged with 
the lichens on tree trunks. During the Industrial Revolution, soot and other industrial wastes darkened tree trunks and killed off lichens. This enabled the black moths living in the cities to be well camouflaged. So they could live long enough to reproduce and become abundant while the light-colored moths were eaten up by predators.